I am a white American male, and America's promise of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is working pretty well for me. Just as the monarchy of King George III worked well for a lot of people in Britain and in the American colonies. But that wasn't good enough for the American colonists who were revolutionary. They wanted a government founded on the principle that all men are created equal. They spelled out the unalienable rights that all men are endowed with in the Declaration of Independence. They wrote that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government. More than 25,000 American revolutionaries died for the right to create that new government. Almost 90 years later, another 600,000 Americans died to establish that the unalienable rights of all men were more important than states' rights. The Confederate states lost their right to allow human slavery, and the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the United States Constitution stated that non-whites were entitled to the same rights that whites enjoyed. But it took another 100 years for a series of civil rights acts to force the federal government and state governments to begin consistently protecting those rights. Fast forward another 50 years. How well are we doing today? I am a white American male. I never get shadowed by security in a shopping mall. I never hear car doors lock as I approach. I don't worry that a misunderstanding with the police might result in my death or the death of a white friend or family member. Never. And yet some Americans carry those worries with them every single day. Amadou Diallo, Sean Bell, Patrick Dorismond, Timothy Stansbury, and Osame Zongo were all gunned down by NYPD officers even though none of them had committed a crime. Oscar Grant was lying face down on the ground when he was shot and killed by a Bay Area officer. Ricky Boyd was not guilty of a crime. She was killed when an off-duty Chicago cop shot into a crowd from inside his car. Ayanna Stanley Jones was not guilty of a crime. Detroit officers stormed her home and killed her in her sleep. She was seven years old. All of these victims of police violence were black. Only one of the officers involved in these killings served any time, and he was released after less than a year. Two were not indicted at all. Seven were acquitted, and one received only probation. The Declaration of Independence wasn't written for the benefit of those who were happy with the government of King George III. It was written to start us down the path of recognizing the equality of all. I am a white American male. America's promise of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is working pretty well for me. I was less than a year old when Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat in the colored section to a white passenger. I was too young and disaffected to share in the 1964 March on Washington. I didn't come to know of the Woolworth sit-ins or the Greensboro Massacre by Nazis and Klansmen until decades after they happened. Looking back, I would be proud to be able to say that I had supported a number of civil rights protests, but I didn't. And I'll be damned if I'll one day tell my grandchildren that I was around for the National March Against Police Violence, but that I did nothing. Okay.